What's the result of despising God's promises? Parashat Toldot tells us a cautionary tale. But also, why is it that in the end, Jacob receives God's blessing? Parashat Toldot shows us the ultimate reason. Parashat Toldot demonstrates how God's promise prevails in the generations after Abraham, in spite of human twists and turns. In a nutshell, it's about twins, Jacob and Esau, who struggle from birth. As a young man, Esau, the firstborn, despises his birthright and sells it to Jacob with a hasty oath. Then in the next chapter, God's oath, his oath of blessing to Abraham, is confirmed to Isaac. And finally, in the last part of the Parsha, we read how Jacob, instigated by his mother, tricks his father Isaac into giving him the blessing of the firstborn. When we read it, questions arise. Why is it that in the end Jacob gets the blessing, not Esau, the firstborn? What is really determining this? Let's have a closer look at the, at the brothers of Parsha Toldot. First we meet Esau, a hairy and ruddy red-faced hunter. He is a rough and an impulsive character. He seems to live only in the here and now. In contrast, Jacob is called in Hebrew an Ishtam. You could translate that even as a blameless man. But in this context, it means more peaceful, quiet, mild of character. Jacob is a more rounded individual. He is literally and figuratively more smooth. But not just in the positive sense of the word. Jacob captures the moment when his twin is tired and bargains Esau into selling his birthright with an oath. Further, Jacob infamously deceives his own father. Genesis makes it clear that God frowns upon this. We read later that Jacob is confronted with a taste of his own brand of deception as he is tricked twice himself. First into marrying somebody he doesn't want to, and then by his sons who make him believe Joseph is dead. But back to, to reddish Esau who desires instant satisfaction and who sells his birthright for some red lentil soup. This is no ordinary birthright. Being born in the family to which God promised amazing covenant blessings, even that he would be their God, that entitles Esau to a one-of-a-kind inheritance. See especially Parshat Lech Lecha for this. This birthright is marvelously holy, but Esau thinks nothing of it. He completely lacks faith. And then Esau loses the birthright blessing. When he realizes he has he forfeited what he should have deeply valued, he cries out, wailing in despair, but it's too late. It's a cautionary tale indeed. What about us? Do we cherish God's promises as holy and precious? Or do we treat them lightly? Neglect of the precious promise of God, which ultimately is the messianic promise, that leads to wailing and terrible regret when it's too late. But now Jacob again. Does he receive the blessing in the end because he, he is a more rounded individual and he's done? Not really. True, he clearly does value the promises of God more. But the way he and his mother try to obtain them, that's not really an example of godliness. They don't wait for God, but they try to obtain his blessings by messy human efforts. And just as before, when Abraham tried to do things his own way and took Hagar as concubine, serious family trouble is the result. Jacob has to flee far away when Esau wants to kill his deceitful twin brother. But through this all too human story, God's purposes stand as the ultimate determining factor. In the end, it's not that Jacob is better than Esau. It's in the end about God's gracious free choice for the younger brother. The ultimate determining factor is that God simply wanted Jacob as his own. We see this at the beginning of the Parsha, before the two brothers did anything. Rebecca seeks God, asking why her twins are struggling so much in her womb. The Almighty responds, 
two nations are in your womb. And two peoples from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. Here we see the ultimate truth. It is God's free and gracious choice for Jacob, which precedes everything. And that is what prevails through all the human twists and turns of the developing story. God's gracious choice and the oath of his covenant, that's what we all should rely on. Trusting in his purpose and promises, that will save us a lot of trouble and that will give us his shalom. Now, our hope is not in, in human effort or merit, but our hope is in God himself stepping into our story, him coming down even. We see God doing this when, when Jacob literally hits rock bottom because of the trouble he caused. But that's in our next Parsha. For now, if you want to react or talk with us, don't hesitate to use the chat option. We would love to talk with you. Thank you.